Hello everybody, this is Colonel S, and welcome to a very special new Redstone video. Today is the first episode of Colonel S Redstone Academy, where I teach you guys about all things Redstone. So today we are going to look at every Redstone component and give a brief description of what they do. Most, if not all, of these components will get their own video in the future, so be sure to watch out for that. If you like this video and you want to see more of my videos and more of this series, please consider subscribing. It is completely free and it helps out a ton. Now, on to the video. What we are going to first look at today is redstone dust. This is, of course, the basis of all redstone in Minecraft, and it is used in most redstone contraptions, so it is pretty important. When powered, redstone dust can carry a signal for 15 blocks. As you can see, once we hit the 16th block, this lamp will not turn on, but all other f of these lamps right here will be on. And when turned off, it does absolutely nothing. Over here, we can see that redstone also soft powers blocks, which means that this block can power any redstone component other than redstone dust itself. Up next, we have the redstone block. The redstone block can power any redstone component it touches on any of its six faces, but unlike redstone dust, it cannot power blocks. As you can see, this repeater is not powered. Now, redstone block is also the only movable power source in Minecraft, as you can see. Pistons can push it. And also, another weird, quirky feature this has is when you flip this on, for a brief second, this redstone dust will be off, which means this piston will fire very quickly. Next up is the redstone torch. As you can see, it powers anything it touches, except for the block that it is mounted on. It can power blocks as long as the block is placed above it, as you can see right here, and it can also power things below it as long as it is not mounted on the block below it. Also, redstone torches can be turned off if you run a signal into the block that they are mounted on, and this can be used to make torch towers, which are commonly used. Basically, it will turn one side on and one side off when you flick the lever. The lever is next. A lever is a pretty simple power source in Minecraft. You flip it on, and it turns anything it touches on, including the block it, it is mounted on. And you flip it off, and it will turn everything off. As you can see, the block it is mounted on will be hard-powered when you flip the lever on. Next up is buttons. Buttons are a pretty simple power source. They will power anything they touch when on, including the block they are mounted to. A wooden button will give off a pulse length of 16 ticks, and a stone button will give off a pulse length of 12 ticks. What we have next is pressure plates. There are four different types of pressure plates, wooden, stone, light-weighted pressure plates, and heavy-weighted pressure plates. Wooden pressure plates will be affected if you throw an item on top of them, as well as if you stand on top of it. Stone pressure plates will not be affected by items, but will be affected if you stand. And lightweight and heavyweight pressure plates give off signal strengths based on how many items or entities are on top of it. So if I stand on top of it, it is a signal strength of 1. But if I quickly throw an item on top, before I pick it up, it turns to a signal strength of 2, because there are two entities on top. A heavyweighted pressure plate takes a lot more to... Um, give off more than one signal strength. As you can see, I throw four items on top of it, and it still does not give off a higher signal strength than one. The tripwire hook is next. The tripwire hook, when connected to string, creates a tripwire, and whenever a player or entity steps on the tripwire, anything beside the hook or the block that the hook is mounted on will be powered. So as you can see, this piston is powered by this block alone, and the redstone dust on the sides is also powered. Next up, we have the daylight sensor. The daylight sensor is a very simple power source. It will give an output based on how much light or dark there is. There are two modes, light mode and dark mode, to a daylight sensor. The target block is up next. If you shoot a target block with an arrow, it will give off a redstone signal strength based on where you hit it in the target. 
So if you hit it dead in the center, as you can see, it gives off a full 15. But if I hit it somewhere on the edge, it only gives off 3. And I think I could probably get a signal strength of 1 out of this. But that just depends how good I am. There we go. So a signal strength of 1 if you hit it right barely hitting it. A target block is also not a solid block. So repeaters cannot power things through it, nor can any other redstone component. Next up, we have one of the most important redstone components, which is the redstone repeater. It will take an input of any signal strength and output a signal strength of 15. Also, repeaters can be set to delay, meaning they will wait before they turn on and turn off when powered. Right now, it is at one tick delay, so it almost turns on instantly. If we set it to four ticks, though, it waits quite a bit to turn on and turn off. Also, repeaters can take an input from a soft powered block, so if you run redstone dust into a block, it will power the repeater. What we have next is comparators, one of the most complicated and most useful components in Minecraft. So a comparator will take the input signal strength and output the exact same signal strength. So as you can see, this is at a signal strength of 11, I believe, and it will output the exact same signal strength, if you can tell. Now, if you were to input a greater signal strength going into the side of the comparator, it will shut off the output. So as you can see, this lever is closer to the comparator than this one is, so when it is, this is off, it, this will give out an output, and when this is on, it will not, because this is a greater signal strength than this. Also, comparators can be set to subtract mode, so it will subtract this signal strength from this signal strength if you set it to subtract mode. All you have to do to that is right-click the comparator. So, as you can see, this is on, and it gives out this much signal strength, but when this is on, it subtracts that, and you can see it only goes for 2 now, because this minus this is 2, and it will not power this, but it will still power this. Also, comparators can take outputs from containers. More on this later, but this is what it looks like. As you can see, it gives off a signal strength based on how much is inside this container. Next, we have another very useful redstone component, which is the observer. The observer can detect any change in the block behind it, such as if you were to break or place any block or anything that can be placed and it can also detect a change in redstone signal strength. When I turn that redstone on, it will power the observer and give off a one tick pulse, and when it shuts off, it will do the same. Next up, we have the dispenser. The dispenser, much like the dropper, can spit items out when powered, but it can also interact with specific items. If a water bucket is inside the dispenser, when powered, it will spit out water, and when powered again, it will pick up the water. Same thing happens with lava buckets. Another thing it can do is dispense fully lit TNT. So if we let that go, the TNT will then fall down and eventually blow up. Another thing it can do is it can shear a sheep if there are shears inside the dispenser, as you can see here. It will use durability, so you will have to keep replacing shears if you want to use that mechanic. It can also pick up liquids inside bottles. As you can see here, we have 58 glass bottles. And when we power this, we now have 57 and a water bottle. What we're going to look at next is hoppers. Hoppers can take items from the space above them and pick them up and put them inside containers, as you can see here. And they can also pull items out of containers. Hoppers have a weird mechanic where if they are facing into another hopper, but there's also a hopper below it, the hopper below it will always accept the item first. As you can see right here, the item goes down in there. But if we back up the hopper, meaning that there's going to be more items in the hopper than this hopper down here can handle, some of the items will go into the other hopper down here. Also, hoppers can be turned on and off, so right now you can see that if we put items in here, they will start draining into this hopper, but if we turn this hopper off, this will no longer suck items out of this hopper, meaning that this will stop draining. Next, we're going to look at containers. 
What falls into this category are the lectern, the cauldron, the shulker box, the chest, the barrel, the composter, the dispenser slash the dropper, and item frames. Also, hoppers too can fall into this category, but we already covered them. So, all of these containers will give off a comparator output based on what is inside the container and how much is inside the container. So, as you can see, this gives off a pretty strong signal strength because this book is on page 13. And if we go over to the chest here, this got, gives off a pretty weak signal strength because there are only three items in the chest. And this cauldron over here will also give off a fairly weak signal strength because there is only one level of water in here, but if we add more, the signal strength goes up. What we have next also would fall under the category of containers, but it is a different type of container. This is a trapped chest. So this is basically a chest that gives off a redstone output when you open it and does not give off a redstone output when you close it. So as you can see, when we open it, that redstone is powered, and when we close it, it shuts off. Next up, we have two very important redstone components, the piston and the sticky piston. These are meant to push and pull blocks. The piston can only push, and it will just leave its block out here, but the sticky piston will push and then pull it back as well. These can be used to make what are called piston extenders. So as you can see here, this is a double piston extender, and if we turn on both of these pistons here, and then we can turn them off and bring the block all the way back, as you can see there. And this is a triple piston extender, which is much more complicated. So how you turn it off is you have to flick that off, flick that off, flick this on and off, then flick that off, flick this on and off, and flick this on and off. So as you can see, the longer the piston extender gets, the more complicated it gets. These circuits are commonly used in piston doors, which, as you know, I make a lot of. Next up, we have the jukebox. Now, you might be wondering why the jukebox is in a redstone video, but it actually gives off a signal strength of 15 to anything touching it when a disc is playing inside the jukebox. Last but not least is the redstone lamp. The redstone lamp, when powered, will light up, and the lights will shut off when it is not powered. When it shuts off, it actually has slight delay in shutting off. It can also be detected by observers when it turns on and when it turns off. Thank you all so much for watching. I plan to upload a video in this series about once every week, so be sure to subscribe so you know when a new video comes out. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like below and comment what components you would like to see have videos in the future. See you in the next video.